Richard Krause. How long was the period that you worked on this film from start to finish? I mean, it's, it's years and years, I know that. Yeah, we started... Hold on one second. Yeah. Um, we started working, officially working on the movie in uh, May of 2005. Right. Now, how do you maintain enthusiasm for a project over that many years when you're developing technology at the same time? And you're, there, there's so many elements. I guess maybe that's one of the parts that makes it exciting. But how do you maintain your enthusiasm for that amount of time? Well, for me, I knew that I could maintain my enthusiasm because I, I just loved the script that Jim wrote. I, 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 knew, I could envision... Uh, cinematically what I thought the movie could be. Right. But the bigger challenge was keeping our crew motivated. Right. You know, who might not have that same... We, we had people on the movie who... This was their first film they ever worked on. Wow. Because we turned to people, you know, from, from technology sides who had just gotten out of school to, to come and help us out and, you know, things like that. So keeping them motivated, keeping, you know, our editors motivated who are used to coming on a movie and working for... 30, 40 weeks, you know, which would be a long gig for them, suddenly working for 140 weeks. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So that was a bigger focus. And, 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 and a lot of that fell, you know, on me to, to, to be there sort of, uh, you know, as the, uh, I don't know, the cruise director. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure everyone's feeling happy. That they're eating, yeah, that they're going yeah, to the pool and relaxing. Let's do, let's do a pool party this September and invite everybody to come. And you know, and, and, and being there as a sounding board with an open door for people to come in and just talk to me about what their concerns are and, and things like that. Well, now, I interviewed Paul Fromer uh, the other day, Professor right? Fromer, and he, yes, was tell he was telling me that on set he would have to uh, occasionally come up with lines of dialogue or, or new words uh, in Navi uh, because things were changing. Now, I would have had the idea that when you're spending as much money as this movie cost and there are so many effects and that, that everything would be fairly rigid, but it appears not. It appears that on set well, it's okay, still so kind of a growing our whole The goal of our whole production paradigm was to make this a director-centric process. Right. Technology oftentimes is a limiting factor. We wanted technology to be an enabling factor. Right. So we came up with a paradigm where Jim could shoot this movie the same way he would shoot a live-action movie. And one of the things that Jim is great at doing is working spontaneously with the actors on the set. Right. I said to someone the other day that, to me, there are three distinct steps of Jim's creative writing process. The first step is in the actual writing of the script itself. The second step is in working with the actors during the production right. and coming up with new lines and letting the actors have input and, and making that all work. Two, and then the third step is the, the post-production editing process, where again, Jim is like a script writer and looks at story and how it's context and will take a scene and juxtapose it and move it and play it around to, to finalize his, his script. Right. So it was important that Paul would be there on the set with us um, as he, Jim works you know, spontaneously with the cast. And, and yeah, because it, it sounded, it just sounded kind of um, intense and, and exciting, and there, it just seemed like there was, a, it wasn't what I would have expected from a production like this, but I've never been on set for a production like this, so what but, do I know? You know what, we, we wanted this to be like any production. That, 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 and what's really interesting, in those moments where people get confused on this performance capture side, right. it's all about performance, because you're not waiting for lighting. Right. You're not waiting for a crane to go into position. So in those moments, it is all about Jim working with the cast. And when he does that, he'll sit there with Sam and Zoe and say, what are you guys feeling in this moment? How would you feel about playing it this way? How would you feel about playing it that way? What if you said this? What if you did that? And that happened throughout. You know, if I showed you the, the actual dialogue of the first script versus the dialogue in the final script, you will see how that changed and how scenes got juxtaposed and moved around. When we were dealing with the Navi language, we needed somewhere, someone to be there to fill that in for us. Right. 
Well, no, I, I guess that's the difference between a film like Avatar. I guess James Cameron is the difference between a film like Avatar and then some other motion uh, capture films that I've seen that have left me kind of cold. And I don't know, because often, and I didn't feel this way when I watched Avatar, but in other films like this, I sometimes feel like I'm, I'm watching a technical process rather than an organic process. And the difference, I guess, is James Cameron. It, 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 you know what? It's, it's Jim, but it's also the philosophy that we started with, right. which was we, that's exactly what we did not want. Right. We wanted there to be a kineticism in in the shots. And by the way, here's the interesting another interesting thing that came up um, when you deal with visual effects and you deal with technology. Oftentimes, visual effects can be a perfect art. Right. However. Filmmaking is an imperfect art, and there are flaws in it. But there are flaws that we have become accustomed to in watching movies that just make it feel natural to us. Right. We fought to keep those imperfections in what we were doing. A camera bobble, a slight out of focus. Right. Those type of things. But again, all because we wanted the audience to be immersed. And, and again, those are the same things that will come through on a, on a 40-foot wide 3D screen or a 45-inch 2D screen at home. Richard Krause.